Hello, everyone, as you're trickling in. Welcome. We'll wait just a couple seconds to get started. Thank you for being here. All right, well, as people continue to join us, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kyler Blodgett. I'm a state and local policy analyst here at People for Bikes. And we are thrilled that you're here with us for People for Bikes July segment of our monthly industry webinar series. This month's conversation, as you can see on the screen, will be about the relatively newly launched electric battery recycling program. Excuse me. We have two fantastic panelists we will meet in just a second. I want to remind everyone, you are, of course, welcome to take notes, but we will send out a recording and a copy of the slides to everyone who registered today. We'll have about 30 minutes together, the first 20 or so being presentation and the final 10 being Q&A for our panelists. So please do use the Q&A feature in the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, now, with that, please help me welcome our panelists. First is Dr. Ash Lovell, who I have the privilege of working with every single day here at People for Bikes. She's our Electric Bicycle Policy and Campaign Director. We're also joined by Linda Gabor, Executive Vice President of External Relations for Call to Recycle, the group who is administering the battery recycling program. And without any further ado, Ash, over to you. Thank you, Kyler. Thank you for joining us today. We could also have retitled this Blondes, Batteries, and Bicycles. Uh, I think this title that we used was a little bit more professional. Uh, I'm Ash. I'm, as Kyler said, the Electric Bicycle, uh, I am the Electric Bicycle Policy and Campaign Director for People for Bikes. And I want to give a little overview about who People for Bikes is, why we're so excited about working with Call to Recycle on this program, and then I'm going to hand it over to Linda and she will kind of dive into some of the context of why we're doing this program. So People for Bikes is a national bicycling advocacy organization, and we are also the trade association for the bicycle industry. So we get to work with over 320 industry members on a daily basis on all things related to bicycles. We also represent over a thousand ride spot retailer locations and over 1.4 million individual riders. So we are a force for bicycles and we are so excited that we get to work on all different things related to electric bicycles, electric bicycle batteries, all the things that we're going to dive into today. So our goal at People for Bikes is to be the best bicycling nation in the world. And we have a very tangible way that we're going to get there through infrastructure, policy, and participation. We know that it takes really good, connected, safe, and protected infrastructure to make sure that people continue to ride, to feel comfortable riding, and to stay on those bicycles. So we accelerate the construction of safe, fun, and connected places to ride. Through policy, which is a big thing that Kyler and I work on as part of the business network team, we advance pro-bike and pro-bike business legislation. And we do that at the local, state, and federal levels. And through participation, we reduce the barriers to access and welcome more people to the joys of bicycling. What a great job we have. So I wanna give a little overview about the program and why People for Bikes was interested in creating this industry-wide initiative. We started these conversations about three years ago uh, before I joined People for Bikes, this idea of, wow, electric bicycles are selling at an incredible rate. The projections are that between 2020 and 2030, over 12 million electric bicycles will be sold in the US. What do we do with all these batteries? How do we create a program where we can have a sustainable and safe solution to recycle these electric bicycle batteries? So as I said, we started kind of exploring this about three years ago and we had these initial conversations. Some particular companies were interested in doing this on their own and they realized that it was pretty much cost prohibitive to create a program themselves. So joys of a trade association, we were able to bring together a whole lot of the bicycle brands from across the country to create this industry-wide initiative. And this is the first of its kind in the transportation sector. So the bicycle industry can just, you know, 
praise ourselves a little bit for coming together and creating an initiative like this. So we launched the program in November of 2021. And first we started by bringing on these supplier companies. Um, and then we went to the retailers and we launched to retail locations in March of 2022. So bringing on these different places where people can return their batteries. And we're gonna go to the public so that people can you know, start bringing these batteries in on November 3rd of 2022. So we're really excited about this program. We're still, you know, working through bringing all these people in and building the enthusiasm. We'll be rolling out a big media campaign about this in the next few months. And we're so excited you joined us here today to learn more about the program. We will have time for questions as Kyler said at the end. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Linda Gabor. Thank you so much for being here, Linda, and take it away. Thanks, Ash. It's really great to be here speaking with everybody. Um, since I joined Call to Recycle 17 years ago, um, it's been really, really exciting to see how the battery world has transformed. Um, and not just technology, but also from our end of the collection and the recycling aspect. So when I started in 2005, um, Call to Recycle collected about 340,000 pounds of lithium ion batteries. And last year we collected um, almost 3 million pounds of lithium ion batteries. Those numbers are growing and um, it's actually from products um, that we don't have enough time to lift. Um, and one of those are actually e-bikes. And so, I am thrilled to be here to share more about sort of this evolution, not just on call to recycle, but also um, the landscape of legislation, what a state mandate can mean, and then also how the e-bike battery recycling program can help solve those challenges. So some of you may know who call to recycle is. Um, we are a not-for-profit public service organization operating a national battery collection, logistics, and recycling program. We work on behalf of um, over 200 battery and battery product manufacturers to help fulfill their regulatory obligations while responsibly and safely collecting and recycling batteries across the U.S. We are predominantly voluntary program, um, except in certain states uh, where there are extended producer responsibility requirements. And in those areas, um, which includes Vermont, New York, and soon Washington, DC, we fulfill those obligations. So as Ash mentioned, um, we are proud to be uh, working with People for Bikes and the industry to manage the e-bike battery recycling program. And our goal of why this is so exciting for us is we have 28 years of experience where we've made this uh, process seamless for consumer batteries. And it's really exciting to be able to apply this to um, e-bike batteries now. So Call to Recycle's purpose is to safely transition communities to a battery powered world through climate responsible solutions. So we deliver on that purpose by managing the entire ecosystem and doing what's right for today, but also preparing for tomorrow and to ensure a fully sustainable cost-effective solution for battery management of all sizes. This ecosystem really starts at the manufacturer level when a product is introduced into the market that has a battery or a standalone battery. On behalf of those manufacturers, we ensure that those batteries have a mechanism at their end of life where they can be safely and responsibly collected for recycling. This is done through a robust collection network made up of retailers, municipalities, as well as private entities like businesses, manufacturers, hospitals, um, and multiple other um, businesses that are supporting and offering battery collection for both their residents as well as customers. Once those batteries are collected at that network, they are then transported using uh, common carriers via ground, and they are then transported and make their way through an approved service provider network from sorters and processors, where once they reach their um, end of life, they get to the processors, the valuable materials are reclaimed, and we're able to use those in the manufacturing of new products, including new batteries. 
while Calder Recycle is at the core of all of these steps, we do not own or our own transporters, sorters, or recycling facilities. This is really allows us to leverage cost efficiencies, optimize environmental benefits, and also leverage emerging technologies. When we started, um, we were founded in 1994, and um, back then, the rapid of a progression of a patchwork of diverse state laws really served as the catalyst of why we were founded. Um, the rechargeable battery industry wanted to comply with newly formed state laws and also proactively create a, cons a consistent approach to handle those batteries nationwide, sim rather than simply reacting state by state. As you can see from this map here, there are a handful of jurisdictions with a mix of battery laws as it stands today. Some jurisdictions um, have laws for specific chemistries like nickel cadmium and small cell blood acid, while others are focused on rechargeable batteries only, and then others are single use or primary, and now we're starting to see all batteries. The, all the ones that you see in blue are actually a, um, don't have producer funding requirements, but thankfully um, for the battery industry, those manufacturers are voluntarily supporting that program to ensure that we can have a, a national solution and leverage our efficiencies. This is a little bit different um, than some other stewardship programs that you may be aware of, like carpet or paint. Um, where that where they operate more so where states have obligations, Calder Recycle definitely um, has a national solution. And um, since inception, that national solution has allowed us to collect and recycle more than 140 million pounds of batteries. So while much has actually uh, remained the same over the years, we actually have seen much that has changed. Batteries are getting more powerful and they're driving the electrification transformation. So the e-bike industry is actually in a similar place where the portable battery industry was 28 years ago. Back then you didn't see e-bikes in commonly in people's garages or being ridden on the streets. Lithium ion actually wasn't a prominent chemistry. It was just making its way to the market and battery related fires weren't making headlines that we're seeing today. But it now appears likely that at some point there will be legislative mandates that will prevail and similar to how the rechargeable batteries did and e-bike companies and potentially retailers will have to comply. Innovation and technology is outpacing the current laws um, right now. And while environmental impacts are still a significant factor, we're actually seeing safety as a primary driver in some of these efforts. Call Recycle does not support, we don't oppose legislative efforts, uh, we don't lobby, but we do believe that um, it is no longer if and why legislation will happen, but it's actually going to be when and how. We're already seeing a range and hearing a range of new regulatory developments. And since the laws, as everybody knows, and bills can change day to day until they actually become law, we don't know for sure what will actually be in and what's gonna be out. Um, but as of today, what we know is that in California, the Responsible Battery Act um, is moving its way through approvals. And it is an all battery bill that is deeply rooted in safety. Um, E-bike batteries above 300 watt, watt hours would be out of scope, um, but e-bike batteries that are below five kilos and 300 watt hours would be in scope. Um, also, while there's nothing formal yet, um, New York has also signaled that it is going to be revisiting uh, the current battery law and highly likely that high watt hour batteries, notably e-bike batteries, would likely be considered for inclusion in any future uh, law there. <clears throat> we have no idea um, what the final outcome is, when um, these will go, but what we do know is that it's extremely important for us to be prepared for that next wave of change. So, 
if a state, state mandate would be imposed, if a law would be passed, what would this actually mean? It likely would require a e-bike OEM to be part of a stewardship program. That can be done collaboratively through a stewardship organization like called Recycle, um, or you can do that individually and you can prepare your own um, plan. It also would require um, a stewardship program to fund um, the collection and the recycling. A plan would have to be put in place. It would have to be developed, approved, and then it would have to be managed to meet all of the requirements prescribed in the law. So from reporting to collection targets, creating um, an accessible network, public education, awareness to downstream tracking. It would require an established means um, to actually collect those batteries and make sure that they are collected for recycling. That could require retailers to promote recycling online, in stores, and it also could mandate uh, retailers to serve and accept batteries um, as, as a collection point. It would also require in reports and monitoring against other prescribed performance metrics. While every law um, could be different, especially with this increased focus on safety, it would likely place an increased workload on suppliers and also on retailers. The great news is that working with people for bikes in the industry, this program of the e-bike battery recycling program that's been established, it can actually participate now, can actually help proactively prepare for any future regulatory initiatives. Proactively being part of this industry-wide national solution creates harmonization, cost, collection, and recycling efficiencies. It's it, a patchwork of legislative mandates would be more onerous and create significantly more unnecessary costs than an industry-driven solution. We have an opportunity to share these program metrics, making it available and visible on participating OEMs, available collection sites, sharing out the progress we're making with collections, and demonstrating that transparency accountability. We have the opportunity to help write the success story by sharing the results and to show an example of doing the right thing before it's required. We have the opportunity to advise when regulations are being considered. And that success has already started. The groundwork has already been laid. To date, the e-bike uh, program, we have contracts with 31 committed suppliers representing 48 brands. More than 1,250 retailers have now taken training. They're listed as collection sites and they are now actively participating. Many of you on the webinar today are part of this program. Whether a supplier or a retailer, it's because of you that we've been able to collect and responsibly recycle over 8,900 pounds of batteries to date. In addition, the e-bike battery recycling program has also offered necessary materials to help mitigate those risks and to maximize participation. With safety at the core and part of every single discussion um, that we're having these days, we wanna make sure that we can do our part to ensure that batteries are safely handled along every step of that journey. From the recycling kits, signage, point of sale, safety training and materials, and recent safety guidance that has been released by Calder Recycle and People for Bikes, we can provide guidance and uh, recommendations and support for retailers and riders on how to properly handle those batteries at end of life. So as we look ahead, we continue to hear and see interest around high watt hour batteries, notably e-bike batteries. It's vital that we have all players involved to make the program as effective and efficient as possible. If you don't do it now, at some point regulations are gonna level the playing field for us. And as all companies would be required to participate, it likely would become more of an expensive option. The basics of a battery collection program on the surface can seem super simple, 
Um, but the spe specifics are where it gets extremely complicated. Navigating regulatory logistics and recycling complexities is what the program is here to sort, support and to solve. So we would ask if, to embrace this new reality. If you're not already part of the program, we would encourage you to get started today. And if you are already in the program, we continue, we'll continue to support your needs as the regulatory landscape continues to evolve. And we appreciate the support from everybody who is actively committed to this program. We're super excited about where this is going and look forward to continuing this path with all of you. Thank you, Linda. Wow, right? Like such great comprehensive information. Uh, so now I think it's time for us to lean into the question and answer piece. Uh, I see that we have one question already. Sure. Which states is this mandatory currently? Linda, do you want to answer that one? Sure. Right now for e-bike batteries, um, the mandates, um, there are California is uh, the only one that if it's under 300 watt hours is being considered. Um, we do know that there are discussions for future um, for e-bike rechargeable batteries um, in the future. So we are really preparing for what um, we are seeing and hearing that potentially could come down in the next year. So again, this is a really proactive approach to getting out in front of these regulations that we know are coming. Correct. I see more questions. Uh, Kylie, you want me to, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read these, is that okay? Great. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, so from Dan, how does this program Im impact a drive unit system supplier? What role does a system play? Linda, do you feel comfortable answering that? That's a good question. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. It is a, um, that's a good question, Ash. I think uh, might be one we might want to try to respond to um, a little bit later. It, it is a very valid question. Yes, okay. So Dan, we will get back to you. Uh, from Troy, how do we make it harder for brands to delay joining? The brands who are in from the beginning are funding the future recycling efforts for those who will join later. There should be a financial and or PR implication to this. Thank you, Troy. Uh, I can take kind of the first pass at this and then I'll hand it over to Linda. So as we go to the public with this on November 3rd, there will be a list of brands that are included in the program. And those brands will be included in all of the marketing and PR and the big push that we're gonna do to get this out to the public. And if a brand is not in the program, um, by early October, they will not be able to be included in this large marketing campaign uh, that we will be rolling out to the public. So that's kind of the first uh, piece of why it's so important for brands to join ASAP if you haven't already. Linda, anything else to add there? No, I think that's very well said, Ash. I think, um, you know, ultimately we want to recognize those who have um, been on and support those who have been on um, and also give them the kudos. Um, this was a big initiative. And so I think absolutely, Ash, um, through the Rider campaign, we're going to be um, significantly uh, recognizing those who have been supporting the program from early on. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Nikita, I have been able to order the battery shipping kits and the battery stickers and hang tags. However, I have not seen the safety tips poster or the incident kit available for us to order in the portal. How can we obtain these? Linda? Absolutely. So the um, safety tips poster should be on um, the website for um, download and ordering. Every um, initial end of life kit does come with that safety poster. And then the incident kit, um, those are being deployed on a first in, first out. So in the order of the um, retail enrollments is how we are starting to deploy those into the market. Excellent. Thanks, Linda. Uh, from Anonymous, does the program apply only to e-bikes or can e-scooter companies take advantage of it as well? 
It only applies to electric bicycles. Good question. From another anonymous, curious if there are financial incentives for e-bike owners to recycle their batteries, cash payout, voucher, discount towards next battery purchase. We have not included that in this program. Uh, the real issue is that you cannot just throw away these batteries. It's actually illegal to do that now. Um, so this is just a great way to give people a very tangible and easy way to bring these batteries in and make sure they're being handled responsibly and sustainably. Uh, Linda, anything else? Did I miss anything? No, Ash, I would say that, um, you know, on that side, we, at least from call to recycle side, the amount of interest we have received um, from e-bike owners, just that this exists has been um, just astonishing to us. Um, once they heard about this, um, thrilled that there's a solution um, available. And so that's been really, really exciting for them. Um, so we look forward to being able to leverage this a little bit more and um, as we do the rider campaign later this fall. Thank you, Linda. And another question from Nikita, can any brand of e-bike battery be sent off for recycling or only participating brands? You want to take this so, on? Sure, absolutely. So um, at this time, um, we are retailers have the ability to collect any of those um, brands um, for recycling. Uh, we don't want somebody to turn them away. However, um, as we go to launch the rider um, campaign, we likely will ask the retailers um, and the um, any riders or um, e-bike owners to first um, check to see if that battery is accepted. And if not, um, if a participating brand is not part of the program, we will encourage them first to reach out to the manufacturer. Thank you, Linda. We have come to the end of the questions. Anyone else? Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, you know, if you have any more questions, send them in in the next 10 seconds or so. But Ash, Linda, thank you so much for your expertise today. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. You'll get a recording of this along with the slide deck and that web link um, later today or early tomorrow. And great to have this time together. That's great. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Bye, all. Bye.